Good morning. Kia ora and welcome back to a brand new season of Fresh. Season 11. It's Worldwide Fresh this season. It's Worldwide Fresh this season. It's Worldwide Fresh this season. From the people, for the people. Woo! Oh, keep it fresh. Hi Freshies, it's me Israel. I'm tuning in from Samoa. I'm fortunate enough to be living in the beautiful country of the Cook Islands. We're part of the Moana Pacifica team right here in Mangere City. Salafa, my name is Lafai Tulangi. My name is Mao. My name is Grace. And we're here at Mangere Atinsa. Tuning in right here from the heart of the Pacific, Samu. Fresh from the people to the people. And here is what is coming up on your show today. Be fresh, baby! Today, I'll be trying mocha from other island mums. A one word I've never heard in relation to our food is sovereignty. Welcome to our brand new panel show, where if you got something to say, you better say it with your fist. I'm proud, I'm grateful, I'm brown, I'm blessed. And those are all the things that we are and more so much more. Growing up in a Pacific household, food has always been very important. I mean, food is so important, my aunties have food wars over who makes the best little sippy. But one word I've never heard in relation to our food is sovereignty. Food sovereignty is kind of like a Pacifica Sunday feast where our family is free to bring what they can and want to. Where all families contribute a dish that is not only good for them, but good for everyone. The opposite of that would be if one auntie controlled what everyone was bringing and then told them what they could or couldn't put on their plate. Because she was sneaking off and putting all the takeaways in her car. Ooh. One thing we don't really talk about often is the impact colonization has had on our food. Hmm, which makes you question, is the modern Pacific diet a colonial legacy? Historical materials and memories reveal the extent to which colonial settlers changed the island of diet, describing how the settlers taught proper food habits as part of their attempt to civilize the islanders. During colonization, islanders lost many traditional food growing and food preparation skills. This is when the dependency on imported food began. When traditional skills in fishing and food preparation declined, this is when we were spammed with canned food. Ah, I always wondered how my great, 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 great grandfather opened his can of kapapulu. Unhealthy upcuts of meat from developed countries were sent to the islands to get rid of. In the place of traditional meals came an increase in energy-dense, nutrient-poor food products. Mmm, delicious. Deliciously gross. Islanders were taught to fry fish rather than eat it raw, as we had done before colonial rule. Mmm, otta. Mining or cash crops meant that land used for food gathering became inaccessible or infertile. Seafood also declined as pollution from colonial shipping lines degraded reefs. All of these events led to a drastic change in the Pacific diet. This is one of the many reasons the Pacific diet is what it is today. In the words of Chef Ramsay, it's not good enough. There are layers to every issue and a history behind every story, even our food stories. So next time your aunties are fighting over Lu Sipi again, suggest they shall be shifting their energy and using it to fight the systems that keep pushing bad food into our brown neighborhood. Ooh. Hello for lover, my name is Ali Lotiti and you're watching Fresh. Good morning, Freshies. Welcome to Young, Gifted and Brown. I'm JP Foriaki. I'm the director for I Am The Showcase. This morning, you'll be coming backstage, seeing what we've been up to here at Mangare Art Centre. Let's go. How are you feeling, boss? <laughs> I'm excited. 
nervous, of course. But um, I'm keen just to go out and kill it one more time. No, I was just going to say that uh, my mic isn't as loud through here as it was yesterday, but yesterday's volume was like perfect in oh. terms of coming through the... Oh, yeah. What do you call these? Let's make it Good, good. That's good, eh? Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. The purpose of the showcase is to raise awareness for mental health. And when I had my own experiences with mental health, I realized that a lot of um, my friends and family, everyone's still with me, except for my grandfather. Things did seem a lot better when he was around. Maybe I was just young and naive <laughs> um, to, you know, the realities of what this world is like and what it's like to when you actually do get older. But the memories that I have of him, I guess that comforted me a little bit. Um, and the values that he instilled in us, like faith, um, education, but most importantly, the importance of um, like family. Conflicts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they warmed up the history enough for me today, which was good. No. <laughs> It's uh, like our bread and butter. We all sing it at church and family events, so it's good to bring it to this kind of arena and stage um, to show what our everyday kind of cultural aspects are. Yeah, yeah I think it's also important to show that um, us as youth that we are holding on to these hymns yeah. and these um, songs and that it does mean uh, a lot to us as well. Um, boys, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Oh, <laughs> Nervous. We've only had um, rehearsals for about two weeks before the show. It's been fun, um, just getting to know more people and um, getting amongst this, um, this show, um, especially with the message behind it, and yeah. Good vibes with the boys. Yeah. It's my guys. All right, family, we're about 16 minutes until our doors open. <laughs> Last night I saw a post on Instagram and after the showcase, our first and college students went back to class and they did an exercise where they wrote, I am, and then they finished that sentence. And you saw words like, I'm proud, I'm grateful, I'm brown, I'm blessed. And those are all the things that we are and more so much more. Grateful. Proud. Uh, honored. Grateful. Grateful. <laughs> grateful. It's normalising the conversation um, around mental health. Our young Pacifica students, that it's okay to speak on it. Of Arsenal fam, I am on three. One, two, three. I am We're talking about everyone's favourite uncle, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Is he the rock of Polynesia or is he rock bottom? Or as The Rock would say, Sawir, Chi Hu, Kawaliko. And welcome to our brand new panel show, where if you got something to say, you better say it with your chest. We would like to welcome our very special guests and their chests to the panel today. <laughs> today, we're talking about everyone's favorite uncle, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Some would say he's the hero of the Pacific. Well, mostly some won't claim that. But some are starting to question if he is just for the clout and exploiting our culture for capital gain in Hollywood. What do y'all think, panel? The Rock of Polynesia or just Rock Bottom? I think he's done a great job. His movies alone have grossed over, it's knocking on $20 billion worldwide. That's an accomplishment as a human being. And then the fact that he's half black, half Polynesian, is this, this, it's like a bonus for us. So when you're walking through the village with no shoes and you got no food, torn clothes, when you go past that one house in the village that got TV and the rock's on there, and you go, that could be me one. I feel like he's very smart in the way that he's like monetized on his Samoan-ness. I don't necessarily think that he reciprocates that service Samoa has given to him back to Samoa. You can do both. You can like praise his greatness and also um, talk about some things that you're uncomfortable with. So the haka is massive for me. Like, I can't look past that. Like, why would you slaughter something like that for any kind of monetary gain? I just think we should be careful with how we label people heroes. Me being Tongan, I know someone's claiming, but it's a pretty cool thing. 
let's look at Moana, for example. It's created a platform for us musicians, you know what I mean? Like now we've got the whole world looking into the Pacific Islands. Now they're like looking in like for music and, it, and it's a pretty cool thing. It's created like uh, um, opportunities for our people. I'm not trying to dispute how great he is. Like to be in a movie theater in Samoa, like being at Apollo Cinemas and watching <laughs> a rock movie with like everyone, it's like everything he says, people are like, oh like, yeah, 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 like oh. Yes. <laughs> but, I don't know, for me, like, you give back to your community what they give to you. And obviously, the Samoan culture has given him a lot. Pacific culture has given him a lot. And what has he given back besides representation? Does he owe us genuineness in his performances and his role and the way that he expresses his culture? Are we owed that from him because we're Pacific? I don't think so. I don't think no one owes me anything. I think that people do let him get away with things. Like, the bare minimum would be to pronounce words correctly. That's that movie, huh? The Fast and Furious movie? Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> yes, he was. No, 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 yes, he no, no, was. Please, please, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I wasn't tripping because to me, it was like, OK, so it's not Samoan, Polynesian. So maybe, you know, benefit of the doubt, you call it what you want. Maybe they, they was trying to um, just throw a whole bunch of poly words in there. <laughs> but that's problematic in itself, right? Like, we can't be just chucking words together to make it more inclusive. Like, we actually have to work on inclusivity. People aren't asking a lot from him. It's how you show up for us when we are struggling, when we were losing babies to the measles. How did you show up for us? Do you think it's sort of like an unfair pressure we put on um, Pacific people who make it big or who make it anywhere, that they have to give back in some Wait. I think it's all part and parcel, eh? You know, I feel personally, not on a level where rock, the rock is, you know, I, I owe that back to the community. Um, so whenever they need something, if we are free, we're there. As far as feeling obligated, I, I never really feel obligated to do anything. It's just like, it comes naturally because of how we were raised. Like, I, I don't want the rock to like, give us money and be, or like, be like, oh, I have to do this, so I'm gonna pay you guys. Like, we want him to feel a part of our whole Pacific family. Give your voice, lend your hand, like, let people know that you're there and you care. Well, we've come to the end of our panel discussion, and now we're going to ask the question. The Rock. Is he the Rock of Polynesia, or is he Rock Bottom? He's the Rock of Polynesia. I think he's the Rock of Polynesia, and that's why we need to question him and hold him accountable. I think he's narrow. Rock of Polynesia, with a little bit of bottom. <laughs> If you want to be a part of the conversation, go online, tell us your opinions, tell us your thoughts on Twitter, Instagram, all of that, and hashtag it with... Say, say it with your, your chest. chest. Hey guys, can I get everyone to please take a seat? I'm wearing a jumpsuit, I can't sit. That's okay, you can jump onto that fella and take a seat. Here's <laughs> off. Oh love your work. This is against love our human rights. All right, tell falava everyone. My name is Fia Tamata Mawa Aitili. And I'm here today to help you rediscover and reconnect with your identity as a proud Pacific human being. What's <sighs> up? I mean, um, how you, my, Milo? My, Milo? 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 Milo. Oh. Milo. Um, I'm Maori and Palangi, so you know, Afagasi up. <laughs> huh? Okay. Um, my dad's pretty much a feel Palangi though. That's why he sent me to a school that has hardly any fobs, because <laughs> I'll be the only one. Pick me in first 15 straight away. <laughs> Talofa? Talofa. Talofa. Ta. Ta. Lo. Lo. Fa. Fa. Talofa. Talofa. Uh, my name is Karen. 
and um, well, my family is more Samoan. I'm more Kiwi. I'm very passionate about empowering and helping our Pacifica. Sorry. Um, to, to, to stop being lazy and wasting money on things like church and family and boxes of animals. Maybe if you guys didn't eat so many animals, then, you know, you might fit into a jumpsuit like this. Go Wingog or Philip Lapu. Really glad and happy to be here. And um, honestly, I think it would be uh, really nice if, um, you know, we didn't have to um, wake up so early on Sunday morning. It'd be nice to have a bit of a sleep in, you know, have brunch on uh, Monday the Bridge. Oh gosh. and travel the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can we cut the camera sticks? Uh, if you want to pass this course, you're going to have to participate in all activities. We're going to slap a few parami out of us, okay? Get your pants! <laughs> um, I remember growing up and uh, swimming around the aunties and somebody will catch a fish and they will throw it at you and then you eat it. And that's what we call raw fish. Hey, this is Gigi and you're watching Fresh. Tala for lava, I'm Savai Tolovai. Foyaxia, Noa'ia, I'm Sophia. Hi, my name is Heihu Sipi. I'm the True Blue Blood Niwaya. Talufa, my name is Ani. I'm here to taste, test some raw fish from all the other places, apparently. I love my island food. Even though we brought up here, our island food will never go away. My dad is a fisherman, so I'd love to um, say that I am a fisherwoman. Um, I remember growing up and uh, swimming around the aunties and somebody will catch a fish and they will throw it at you and then you eat it. And that's what we call raw fish. I hope my dish goes really well because I usually get good reviews. Today, I'll be trying mocha from other island mums. Love it. Oh, yes. Cute. My kids keep nagging me to make this, make that, like raw fish, chop soy. Even my Tongan family asked to make chop soy for them. Love it. Mm. Quite a bit salty. Um, I prefer um, just a little bit of salt, um, but the fish is okay. Oh. Ah, that's very salty. Cream is. I don't know. I don't know about this one. So-so. Mm. I'd give it a maybe seven. About a six. I'd give it a four out of ten. Mama, whoever you that, uh, whoever uh, made this uh, raw fish, you know, just use um, less salt. Um, this is in terms of us uh, eating healthy. I made my own raw fish today with the help of my daughter. So I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Parsley, wow, that's interesting. The bubbles in the um, coconut cream, I suspect she's put it into a cocktail shaker and shaken it a little bit too much. Too much lemon, lemon seed in it. I just ate one. It's got chili in it. And that's something I'm not accustomed to. That's a two, and that's been kind. Overall, I'll give this a five. My raw fish. 
will beat this rockfish. I feel sorry for them, yeah. I think I've made a really, really great dish and it's gonna blow theirs away, yeah. Well, I hope this is better than the other one. This is just visually, um, and we eat things that look good. Too creamy, too thick. And there's some little seedy things and stuff that I've never seen in a raw fish before. Pomme, 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 pomme grade or something? Pomegranate? Yeah. That is definitely a combination of the last two I've just had. The vegetables that's in there should be diced up in small pieces. Mm, probably give it a five. A five out of ten. If you had to be generous, what would be your answer? I'd rate it a 0 0.5. <laughs> nah, I think my raw fish would beat this raw fish. Cute. The key is the fish. The fish is really important. It has to be fresh. It has to be a firm fish, not a flaky fish. You know, it says not raw whole fish. Look at the size of that. Very, very mean on the sauce, this one. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. The fish is fresh. Um, I love it. Yeah, it was it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. Actually, I did take two spoons full. Yeah, I would throw a whole lot of chilli and salt in there. Overall, I will give this dish a eight. I'll give you um, eight out of ten. Definitely seven point five. And is it better than your? No, my raw fish would beat this raw fish. That's all the time we have today. That's all the time that we have, folks. Eh ho ma. I'd like to throw a quick shout out to my son, son Joshua. Love you, my boy. Shout out to the Pacifica supporters. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Peace. Always knowing like there's someone out there that could be drowning. When it happens, it's all like, all happens like that. I don't want a white person to call me a fob ever. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I feel mate. Sun mate out.